This video here is to show you some examples of air or atmospheric pressure. You can see I have this syringe here. Let us call this part the plunger or the piston of the syringe and this is your tank. This is the mouth part of the syringe. Now when the plunger of the piston of the syringe is in this position, the inside of the tank of the syringe is filled with air. Of course, we don't see the air inside. Now, if I close the mouth of the syringe and I try to push the plunger, as I push it, it becomes more and more difficult for me to push the plunger. It's very difficult for me to push it, although I'm trying so hard. And the moment I release the plunger, you see what happens. It comes back. Why is that? This is because the air pressure from inside the tank, inside the syringe, is preventing the plunger from being pushed. And when I release the plunger, it gets pushed back because of the air pressure from inside the syringe. Not just that, without closing the mouth of the syringe, when I push the plunger completely like this. So when I bring the plunger to this position, what is happening is, all of the air from inside the syringe is being pushed out of the mouth of the syringe. Now at this position, if I close the mouth of the syringe, I will now try to pull the plunger. I'm, I've pulled it back and the moment I release it, see what happens. Now what is this happening? Initially, we pushed all of the air from inside the syringe out of its mouth. Now we close the mouth and we pull the plunger back means the tank of the syringe is like vacuum. There is no air inside and there is no air pressure. Now the moment I release the plunger, the air pressure or atmospheric pressure from outside the syringe pushes the plunger. The very fact that a liquid gets inside a syringe or for that matter ink gets inside a fountain pen is because of atmospheric pressure. This is because, like I've mentioned earlier, when we push the plunger of the syringe to this position, all of the air from inside the tank of the syringe is pushed out of the mouth of the syringe. We know atmospheric pressure is acting in this direction on the surface of the liquid. So it is this atmospheric pressure which pushes the liquid inside the syringe when we pull the plunger backwards. And the liquid goes like this. A liquid getting pulled up a straw is also because of atmospheric pressure acting on the surface of the liquid. This is because when a person starts sucking from, of course, the open end of the straw, what happens is air from inside this straw gets sucked into the lungs of the person, of course. So to say, there's kind of a vacuum inside the straw that is created and the atmospheric pressure then after pushes the liquid into the straw and thereby into the mouth of the person. Another example that I want to show you about atmospheric pressure is this. You can see that the cardboard is not falling down, although we have liquid inside the glass. This is because the atmospheric pressure that is up acting from down below here on the cardboard is greater than the liquid pressure that is acting from inside the glass. Also you see that we've filled up the syringe with colored water. But you see that the colored water from inside the syringe is not falling down on its own. The liquid will come out only when we push the plunger. Now why isn't the liquid falling down on its own? That's because the atmospheric pressure which is acting from the mouth of the syringe is preventing the liquid from falling down as the atmospheric pressure is much more than the pressure that is exerted by the liquid from inside the syringe. Now this is something called a suction pad or also called rubber suckers. You must have seen this. Now this also works because of atmospheric pressure. We usually have seen these suction pads stuck on glass surfaces. Could be a mirror could be the windscreen of a vehicle. So this thing works because of atmospheric pressure. What happens is, whenever we place a suction pad on a smooth surface, this inside space 
between the smooth surface and the suction pad is filled with air. Now when we push the suction pad from this end, all of the air inside this space between the smooth surface and the suction pad is pushed out of the suction pad. So to say there is no air inside the suction pad to exert any kind of a pressure. Now whatever air pressure is exerted on the suction pad is from the outside. So this air pressure or atmospheric pressure acting from the outside pushes the suction pad from the outside and keeps it stuck to the smooth surface or the glass surface. So it is atmospheric pressure which pushes and keeps the suction pad stuck to smooth surfaces. Like you already know, it's not like the suction pad has some kind of a glue which keeps it stuck to the smooth surfaces.